as you said, Twitter really has become a tool for engagement across society. And recently, we saw some of its positive social change with the role it's played in the Me Too movement. But, um, but nonetheless, Twitter has also experienced its own sexual harassment problem to confront. And I just wanted to ask you some questions about how Twitter is dealing with these issues. I don't know if you're aware, Mr. Dorsey, of the Amnesty International report called Toxic Twitter, a Toxic Place for Women. Are you aware of that? I am aware of it. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to ask unanimous consent to put that in the record. Without objection. Um, now, now, in that report, it described the issues women face on Twitter and how Twitter could change to be more friendly to women. Um, I assume you've talked to Amnesty International about this report and about some of their recommendations. Um, I'm not sure if uh, I haven't personally, but I imagine the folks on our team have, but we can follow up with you. Thank you. The report goes into great and frankly graphic detail of the types of abuses that have been used, experienced on Twitter, including threats of rape, bodily harm, and death. Now, some were found, have found to violate Twitter's guidelines, but others were not. And I think probably you and your staff agree that Twitter needs to do a better job of addressing instances where some of the users are, are using the platform to harass and threaten others. And so I'm, I'm wondering if you can tell me, does Twitter currently have data on reports of abusive conduct, including on the basis of race, religion, gender, or orientation, targeted harassment, or threats of violence? And separately, does Twitter have uh, data on the actions that it has taken to address these complaints? So a, a few things here. First and foremost, we, we don't believe that we can create a digital public square for people if they don't feel f safe to participate in, in the first place. And that is our number one and singular objective as a company is to increase the health of this public space. We do have data on um, all violations that we have seen across the platform and the context of those violations. And, and we do intend, um, and, and this will be an initiative this year, uh, to create a transparency report that Thank will make you. that data more public um, so that all can learn from it and we can also be public, uh, held publicly accountable to it. That's, that's, that's good news. And you, you say you'll have that this year yet by the We're end? We're working on it as an initiative this year. We have a lot of work to do to aggregate all the data into a, a report that will be meaningful. And, and is Twitter also taking, taking actions to address some of the deficiencies that have been identified in this report and in other places? We are. We, we, we definitely, um, we're, we're focusing, one other th point I wanted to make is that we don't feel it's fair that the victims of abuse and harassment have to do the work to report it. Yes. Today our system does work on reports, especially when it has to take content down. So abuse reports is a metric that we would look at, not as something that we want to go up because it's easier to report things, but as something we want to go down, not only because we think that we can, re we can reduce the amount of abuse, but we can actually create technology to recognize it before people have to do the reporting themselves. Recognize it and take it down before a report has to be made. Yes, uh, any series of enforcement actions all the way to the, to the extreme of it, which is removing content. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I, I just want to say for the record, I don't think these issues are unique to Twitter. Um, unlike so many of the invented borderline conspiracy theories, I believe this is a real threat, and I appreciate you, Mr. Dorsey, taking this seriously and your entire organization so that we can uh, really reduce these threats online. Thank you, and I yield back. Thank you.